Hi, ninth grade. Um, Miss Caulfield here. So we ended physical school talking about Stalin, right? And then uh, last week I had you guys look at Hitler and a lot of you guys were really incredible and posted your responses about, um, you know, comparing and contrasting Hitler and Stalin and which one was more, uh, which was more successful leader. And so I just wanted to say how much Mr. Mewson and I appreciated all of you guys taking the time and completing that assignment. Uh, before we move on into our Cold War unit, I just kind of wanted to finish up uh, our World War II unit, you know, and kind of talk about how World War II ended, um, and then also uh, a little bit of a assessment assignment for you guys um, to finish that out, which I'll explain to you guys uh, for our next class. So first thing I wanted to do was I just wanted to go over some of the key things that kind of led to the end of World War II, just because we talked a lot about World War II, so I kind of want to bring it all together and talk about how it ended. Um, the kind of like big thing that I want to talk about is was the U.S. justified in using the atomic bomb against Japan? Um, in order to answer that, I need to give you guys a little bit of background, and then you'll be looking at some documents um, about the dropping of the bomb. So first, you know, the U.S. did not, and I'm just going to go through some of these notes, um, the U.S. did not want to join World War II, just like they didn't want to join World War I. Um, they didn't join until Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. It was very unexpected. Uh, the U.S. did not expect Japan to do this. There was really no reason for Japan to do it, and honestly, it ended up not being great for Japan. Um, so the Battle of Stalingrad was a big turning point in ending the war in the European theater. Um, Germany attacked Stalingrad, which was this kind of like last holdout in the Soviet Union. They pushed and pushed and pushed until they hit Stalingrad, and they threw everything they had at Stalingrad, and then the Russian winter hit, and the German soldiers just were not prepared for the fierceness of the Russian winter. And ultimately, they had to surrender. And this is when the Soviets were able to really start pushing west into Eastern Europe and ultimately into Germany. The U.S. Navy and Air Force really began fighting in Japan in the Pacific Theater, which you'll learn a lot more about next year. But I just want to hit on it a little bit. Um, the Battle of Midway was a very important battle uh, that really established U.S. dominance. The, I'm sure some of you guys have also heard of D-Day. D-Day was a really important uh, day. And this is when the Allied forces, Canada, or Canada, <laughs> Canada um, the U.S., um, and some other Allied forces invaded Normandy in France. And it was a really heroic invasion. It was, I mean, many, many Allied soldiers died. But this is what allowed the Allies to start pushing into Germany from the West. So you have the Soviet Union pushing in on the East, you have the Allies starting to push in in the West, and ultimately Hitler commits suicide and Germany surrenders in the spring of 1945. The U.S., though, is still fighting in Japan after this. And here are a couple of things that I think are really important before we start talking about the atomic bomb. The first one are the Bataan Death Marches. So Japan, and you'll learn about this a little bit more next year, Japan was really brutal in World War II. They were really looking to gain territory and land and power. And so in 1942, Japan won a victory, and they took 75,000 U.S. and Filipino troops, and they forced them to march 65 miles. It was very cruel treatment. Many soldiers died. Um, thousands perished. Uh, and this was an important kind of thing that happened to U.S. soldiers that kind of left, obviously, a very bad taste in their mouth. Uh, the Battle of Okinawa was also very important. Um, this was really the last major battle in the Pacific, and it was the bloodiest. 82 days and heavy Japanese resistance. You had kamikazes, which were suicide planes, um, Japanese suicides, massive casualties. The Japan were, the Japanese were really um, told not to surrender. So they were told to fight until their last breath, regardless of if they were winning or losing. And then you have the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project really began in 1940, and this was um, American scientists and refugees coming together with a budget of, began $2 million, to develop the atomic bomb. 
I'm not really get into, going to get into the nitty gritty of it, but they developed the atomic bomb. And it was really questioned as to whether or not it should be used. You know, after they tested it and fully understood, like, the magnitude of what they had created, there were arguments for and against, right? Um, and so feel free to read through these arguments for and against. I just want to uh, give you a little bit more direction on the assignment you'll be completing today. So there, this will be posted on the Google Classroom, and it looks like this. So this first part is just a summary of the two historical narratives. So why did some people believe that dropping the atomic bomb was the way to go, and other people believed it wasn't? Sorry, my cat is being a weirdo. Um, so these are from some different sources. So this first one is from Three Narratives of Our Humanity by um, John W. Doer, 1996. Um, and here we have the two kind of major competing theories. Hiroshima as victimization. So this is more of the Japanese um, side of the story and as well as some Americans. And then this is Hiroshima as triumph. So you have the other side of the argument, right, of the U.S. having victory in a war um, and what happened at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the two Japanese cities that the U.S. dropped bombs on, um, as a triumph. I'm also going to post a little background video that you can feel free to watch if you want a little bit more background just on the atomic bombs and dropping the atomic bombs before you do this assignment. Um, so you're going to go ahead and answer these questions, right, which are just like kind of some summaries. And then there are four documents that you'll look at. Document one is a textbook. And right here I give you guys, here's the source, and I give you guys some directions. So underline and highlight the reasons that led to the U.S. drama the atomic bomb according to this textbook. Keep in mind, it's an American history textbook. It's obviously going to have a pro-American stance. Um, and so you'll go ahead and read those and annotate. Document B is a book written by a World War II soldier. So you'll underline and highlight once again. Document C is actually a um, first-hand account of a 13-year-old who experienced the dropping of the atomic bombs in Japan. So you'll once again underline and highlight according to these um, guidelines. And then lastly, you just have some tables with the number of casualties, reasons for death, things like that. So the final part is where I want you guys to construct your final response. Do you believe that the U.S. did the right thing in dropping the atomic bomb and ending World War II the way that they did? Your final response must include your response, your answer to the question, a short piece of evidence from at least two of the documents, and it has to be at least three sentences long. You're going to post your response as a comment in the assignment. And I'm going to open up the commenting for this assignment. Once you post your response, you are also going to respond to two of your classmates. When you respond to your classmates, it can be to add something to their response, to agree with their response, respectfully disagree with their response. When you respond to a classmate, please make sure that you reference the documents or include a piece of evidence that is supporting whatever you are saying in your response. Okay, so you're going to post your response and you're going to respond to two classmates. Okay? All right. Miss you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.